So hello everyone. Um, welcome to this session on uh, CNCF project updates. Uh, my name is Ricardo Rocha. I'm a computing engineer at CERN, and today I will give you some updates on uh, different projects in, in the CNCF, uh, some projects that have moved in their uh, graduation stages, uh, and also some specific updates on, on different projects. I will start this, uh, this uh, session by giving a quick recap on the different uh, graduation uh, stages that a project project uh, can go through in the CNCF. Uh, these stages really express different levels of maturity for the projects and are really a good indication for both end users and on the other projects in terms of the ex expectations they can have. Uh, the, usually the first stage for a project to join is uh, the sandbox. Uh, this is an entry point stage. Uh, it hopefully gives the project more visibility, more exposure to end users and to other projects. And it's a very nice way for, for a project to grow. Um, next up is incubation. Incubation is already where most of the due diligence already happens. But a uh, project also has to uh, show very specific criteria, including at least three independent end users, a healthy number of committers, and a healthy number of commits as well. Uh, after that, a project can apply for graduation, and this is the uh, last step in the in the evolution of a project. Uh, in here. Uh, a project already has to show committers from at least two organizations. It has to go through a third party security audit. Uh, it has to show very well established project governance and also a uh, well established uh, committer process so that people can easily join the project. Uh, so what I will do now is uh, I will give you an, an update on the projects that have moved to incubation recently. And this is quite exciting because uh, in addition to a lot of the projects we've seen just a couple of months in KubeCon North America, we already see new projects also uh, joining uh, incubation. I will start with Cilium. Uh, Cilium is the, is the project that secures uh, network connectivity and load balancers between applications. Uh, next up is uh, Keda, uh, which is the Kubernetes-based support, support uh, event-driven autoscaler. Uh, after that, we have the distributed application runtime dapper, which provides APIs that simplify microservice connectivity. And they do this by supporting both service-to-service -service invocation and pop-sub messaging. Uh, this project helps writing uh, resilient and secure microservices. Uh, after that, we have Flux. Flux is the continuous pro and progressive delivery solution for Kubernetes that is open and extensible. And I will give some more uh, updates about this project later. Uh, we also have Crossplane, which is a project I'm particularly excited about. And it's a Kubernetes add-on that enables uh, platform teams to assemble uh, infrastructure from multiple vendors. Uh, they expose higher level APIs, which make for a great developer experience. After that, we have Longhorn, and Longhorn is with Dapper, uh, the, uh, one of the two projects that have moved to incubation in the last couple of months since KubeCon North America. Uh, Longhorn is, is a distributed block storage system for Kubernetes. It is designed to run on top of different types of physical storage devices, infrastructures, and architectures. And finally, we have OpenTelemetry. OpenTelemetry is a collection of tools, APIs, and SDKs to instrument, generate, collect, and export telemetry data so that software behavior and performance can be analyzed. So with all of these movements, we now have 26 uh, projects in incubation stage. Uh, again, two new ones just since KubeCon North America two, two months ago. Um, so thanks really to everyone for the great work and the community for the awesome collaboration that helps these projects move uh, um, and reach uh, higher levels of maturity. Uh, in addition to incubation, we also have a new project uh, that moved to graduation, and that's uh, Linkerd. Uh, Linkerd is the uh, 16th project to join uh, the graduated stage uh, in the CNCF. So we now have 16 projects graduated. It is the service mesh for Kubernetes. It makes running services easier and safer by giving you runtime debugging, observability, reliability, and security, and all of this without requiring any changes to your code. So I'll move now to give you some specific updates about different projects. The first one I will talk about is OpenTelemetry. Uh, OpenTelemetry has uh, specific goals that include uh, high, providing high-quality telemetry built in in all the cloud-native software. Uh, 
uh, providing a well-factored set of components, which allows easy instrumentation of open source software and sending data anywhere in any format. And also improving observability by integrating tracing, metrics, and logs into a single stream of structured correlated data. Uh, the news uh, in um, open telemetry includes the GA of the tracing spec with virtual, uh, version 1.0 now available in multiple SDKs. This includes Java, .NET, Python, and Go. Uh, the beta for metrics implementation with the interoperability with Prometheus being uh, something uh, that is key and also working uh, towards full compatibility with uh, open metrics. Uh, the log specification work is now in beta. And uh, of course, if you want to check more details, visit this this link here with the opentelemetry.io status, and you can see the different status of the multiple components that make uh, open telemetry. Next up is Flux. I mentioned I would give some more news about Flux. Um, the big thing is, of course, Flux v2 uh, that um, uh, has been uh, growing in usage and that has triggered the move to incubation. Uh, there have been really significant updates to the project that need highlighting. The first one I'll mention here is the integration into the GitOps offerings of multiple cloud vendors. Uh, the introduction of server-side apply. So this uh, really brings uh, much improved CPU, memory, and network performance. It also dramatically reduces the number of uh, co uh, calls to the Kubernetes API. Uh, after that, we have a set of uh, stable APIs from now on, which is really, of course, uh, uh, well received by everyone. And finally, I would mention uh, the drift detection between the desired state and the cluster state uh, done reliably. Uh, this is great news, as it means that uh, users can now wait for all the applied resor resources to become ready, and they don't have to write any more uh, any specific health, health checks uh, themselves. Uh, the news also about Linkerd, uh, big news graduation, of course, uh, the huge news, but also some specific updates on the project. Uh, first one is authorization policy. Uh, this allows end users to easily enforce uh, which types of connections are allowed with a cluster, and this is done based on TLS identity and uh, also benchmark results. Uh, the project, the benchmarks uh, mean that Linkerd users. Uh, can minimize the resource requirements and the user-facing latency that is imposed by uh, running a service mesh. If you want to get involved, do it by uh, checking linkerd.io. After this, I will go on a lightning round of project updates um, to cover as many as possible in uh, this uh, small amount of time. Uh, the first one is PCV Inspire. Uh, the news here are in the SDKs and APIs. Uh, which allow users to easily integrate and test new plugins and automation codes. The second one is the in the controller. Uh, this allows usage and consumption of Spiffy Spire via pure Kubernetes API interactions. Uh, so no longer no no need to understand the in-depth mechanisms that leverage the project. So much much uh, uh, welcome. Uh, in Easy, improved ease of use, of course. And finally, in the integration with serverless platforms, specifically, it can now deliver cri cryptographic workload identities uh, with certificates or JSON web tokens uh, to serverless workloads from cloud platforms like uh, AW, AWS Lambda and Google Cloud Functions. Uh, gRPC. Um, very popular project. The big news here uh, are the intro recently introduced uh, uh, retry and session affinities. Uh, this is the ability to retry. Uh, this ability to retry uh, helps improve service availability by enabling uh, gRPC applications to retry outbound requests according to a policy. Uh, can, this can really be very helpful if instances or endpoints uh, that host your applications are slow or flaky. After that, we have Prometheus, uh, the open source system monitoring and alerting toolkit. Uh, here, the updates include uh, high resolution histograms. Uh, this is a feature that uh, should solve a lot of the errors in quantile estimation. So it's a very, very cool feature. Um, and also the launch of the Prometheus conformance program. Uh, this program enables end users to determine which projects or services are truly compatible with Prometheus. And they will hopefully prevent fragmentation of the market and also increase interoperability, interoperability and ensure uh, improved um, reliability as well. 
uh, Vitesse. Uh, Vitesse is a database solution for deploying, scaling, and managing large clusters of open source database instances. Um, some updates here include the improvements uh, in shorter latencies and reduced CPU memory and memory usage for serving queries. Uh, this means that uh, both uh, the system can both deliver higher throughput, uh, but also lower the hardware and cloud costs to run the, the service. And uh, second last, we have uh, FluentD. Uh, FluentD is an ecosystem to solve the logs collection and processing in containerized environments. Uh, the big update here is that this project is no longer just for logs. Um, it has first-class integration with open, open metrics and Prometheus, and there are plans to do the same for open telemetry. Uh, so please give this a try and, and provide feedback to the project. And finally, Cordian S. Uh, Cordian S is a flexible DNS server uh, that many of us run uh, for service discovery in, inside Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the big update here is that uh, the Cordian S team is moving more of the DNS functionality into plugins, uh, and this includes things like the new zone transfer plugin. Uh, the other piece of news that is quite important as well is support for um, it's a, an Acme plugin, it, which is in development that should uh, allow supporting automated uh, certificate management through the Acme protocol. And with this, I come to the to the uh, final slide of this presentation. Again, thank you everyone for uh, for the amazing collaboration um, in the different projects and all the end users for supporting and helping these projects reach uh, higher levels of maturity. Um, and I wish you all uh, an amazing KubeCon. <laughs>